Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Uh, today I wanted to do another video on blood pressure and why the numbers are not as important as we think. Okay, so uh, the first thing to say is thank you so much for your patience. I'm sorry I haven't put any videos out. Uh, we had the heart health seminar um, in August, which went really well, uh, but then I got caught up. So I'm gonna, I've now relaxed and I'm gonna get some more videos out soon. Uh, so I thank you for your patience. Right, now the first thing to say is there is nothing that generates more anxiety than high blood pressure numbers. Okay, I, as part of my work, you know, when I do a clinic, patients come, they have their blood pressure men uh, measured by the nurses, and the first thing that everyone worries about is, oh my god, what was my blood pressure? What was my blood pressure? And what I wanted to try and do is try and make things slightly um, <clears throat> clearer because I don't think the numbers are that important. So, um, let me try and explain this in a simplistic sense so that you can understand it, okay? The, the reason blood pressure is considered important is because if people have a persistently elevated blood pressure, then there is evidence that they are at a higher risk of uh, heart attacks and strokes over many years, okay? And if you can lower the blood pressure, then, pe then uh, there is evidence that it, it reduces that risk by about 25% as a ballpark figure. However, it is not as straightforward as just lowering the number, and I'm going to try and explain this by using an analogy, okay? So imagine you're at a imagine you're visiting a construction site, okay, and you see a sign on the construction site, which we often do, which says people here must wear a helmet. People who are visiting must wear a helmet. So you have to say, why do these people need to wear a helmet? And the answer is that the chances of something falling on um, someone's head are high, and if they were wearing a helmet, that could reduce their risk of dying from injury by 25%, an arbitrary figure. But this is true for wherever we are. So, for example, I don't have to be on a construction site. I could be sitting in my study here talking to you. And if the roof on my head decides to collapse and I were wearing a helmet at that time, then the helmet would still reduce my risk of dying by 25%. But the chances of the roof falling on my head are very, very low whilst I'm in my study compared to if I were on a construction site. So in some ways, there is more to it than just the idea that a helmet protects you. There has to be something more to it. So in blood pressure, we realize that it's far more important as to who you are and what your other risks are, which decide your risk of stroke. So let me give you an example. There was a very interesting study or an interesting paper by Erica Wallace uh, in Heart journal 2002 which was called cardiovascular and coronary risk estimation in hypertension management and what they found what they demonstrate is this they said that actually let me just bring this up yeah they took two patients they they demonstrated two patient groups okay both patients had a blood pressure of 150 over 96 but patient a was young, she was female, she had low cholesterol, she was a non-smoker, she didn't have diabetes. Uh, and in her, the risk of having a problem in 10 years was incredibly low. In fact, you would have had to treat 321 people with blood pressure medications to make any difference to one person. However, there was another patient uh, with the same blood pressure of 150 over 96, he was male, he was much older, 65, his cholesterol was high, he was a smoker, he was diabetic. In him, the, the risk of something bad happening to him over 10 years was much higher. And therefore, you only needed to treat 16 people to make a difference to one life. So what this goes to show is it's not the blood pressure that is important. It's all the other things. It's the age. It's whether you have diabetes. It's whether you smoke. It's whether you're sedentary. If you are someone who is generally fit and well, who doesn't smoke, who doesn't have any risk factors, who lives a healthy lifestyle, who minimizes his stress, who sleeps well, your risks from having a high blood pressure are incredibly low. If, on the other hand, you do all those things which are actually bad for our health, including being overweight, smoking, being stressed, not sleeping, being diabetic, etc., then the risk is much higher. 
And therefore, what I'm trying to get across is that the number is not important. What we shouldn't be doing is focusing on, oh my God, what this is my number, I need to get that down. What we should be concentrating on is the general state of our health and thinking, okay, well, uh, you know, if I'm sedentary, then I need to get more exercise. If I'm stressed, I need to minimize my stress. If I smoke, I need to cut that down. Trying to move from being an unhealthy person to a healthy person makes a far bigger difference to our overall risk compared to just reducing the number or making the number look nicer. So I hope this takes away some of the anxiety that people may have when they say, oh my God, what's my blood pressure, etc. Why is the blood pressure not going down? Don't worry about the blood pressure number. Concentrate on becoming a healthier person. Concentrate on sorting out your other risks and your comorbidities. And your risk from the blood pressure will automatically come down. The blood pressure is just a number. There's nothing magical about it. It's a number. This again raises another point, is, which is, you know, they every so often the guidelines change and they'll say, oh, a blood pressure of 150 over 90 is high blood pressure. Then they bring the value down. They change the goalpost after a few years. Now they're saying blood pressure of 135 over 80 is high blood pressure. So the point I'm trying to make is what what is why is that? And the answer is because people are generally getting unhealthier. That's why. So even at lower blood pressures, unhealthy people have bad things, you know, bad things happen to them. And healthy people, even with higher blood pressures, remain fine. And that is why the guidelines keep changing the number, because the number is not as important. The fact that we are getting more stressed, we're leading worse lifestyles than, say, 10 years ago, means that there are more events happening. And that is why they're bringing the number down and saying, oh, treat these people early. But the way to treat them is to reduce overall risk. So thank you so much. Um, now, uh, lots of exciting things. I have a new website called uh, drsanjayguptacardiologist.com and I would invite you to come and visit uh, the website. I'm trying to put on lots of stuff on there, so that'll be good. Um, I'm also on Instagram as Your Cardiology, where I put these one minute videos in case uh, you don't like listening to me for too long. Um, and then um, we're also um, there's also a WhatsApp group now for cardiology patients, which I participate in. Uh, and my Facebook page is at your cardiologist at your cardiologist. Great. Thank you so much.